Miami Heat had a full dress rehearsal. Was this a preview of their starting lineup in full rotation? We give our takeaways from the game and check in to see if our questions about the preseason have been answered on today's Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Heat, your daily podcast covering all things Miami Heat. However, you might be tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or on your favorite podcast app. Thank you for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. I'm Wes Goldberg here with David Ramil, recording from the underbelly of FTX Arena following the Miami Heat's final preseason game. Uh, a 120-103 to win over the, the New Orleans Pelicans, but that doesn't really matter because it's preseason. What really matters is that this served as the only and final dress rehearsal before the start of the regular season next week, and the reveal of Eric Spolstra's starting lineup and the bench rotation. So on a night when it was only Omer Yurtsevin out, Spolstra started uh, Kyle Lowry, Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, Caleb Martin, and Bam Adebayo. That's the starting five that you and I had long expected. Uh, we'll talk about the reserves in a minute, but just to uh, you know, say who they are, it was Gabe Vincent, Victor Oladipo, Max Strews, Duncan Robinson, and Dwayne Dedman. So it's pretty clear that that is going to be the night-to-night 10-man rotation. Eric Spolster said before the game that he was going to play 10 guys in the first half. We basically got the entire first half in the first six minutes of the third quarter to get a full sort of dress rehearsal of what this team is going to look like. We'll talk about the reserves here in a minute, but David, we'll... Uh, what were your thoughts on the starting lineup in general, now that we pretty much know what it is? I think they look great. Uh, I think the defense was fantastic. I thought uh, having Jimmy Butler out there again, uh, every bit as good as he's always been, uh, and dynamic, leading the team as always. Uh, fantastic performance from him. We also saw some really aggressive showings from Bam and Tyler. Overall, though, it was just the, the faster pace. Well, we saw them moving the ball quickly, swinging the ball around constantly. It was a constant motion on offense. Defensively, again, very, very strong unit. Lots of passing, lots of versatility. Switching on defense. I thought there might be a mismatch there with Caleb Martin having to guard Zion and Williamson. But overall, just because of Miami's strengths, uh, being able to switch, they're Quick footedness. Yes. I think they were just able to adjust so much, so often that there was really no mismatch. They were just actually being. I think they did a fantastic job defending early on. They may have lost some of their swerve a little bit later on, but overall, I think uh, they just did a really, really good job. It was kind of a good stress test, I thought, defensively for this group because you mentioned Zion Williamson versus Caleb Martin. Caleb Martin going uh, with basically the strategy of fronting Zion Williamson. Caleb talked to us a lot about that uh, during our media day interview with him. Just the fact that yeah, he's recognize he's not undersized. Caleb Martin knows he's not 6'10", but he also said, look, the, the way we switch and the way we try to disrupt things, like defensively, Miami's theory is always muck it up as much as you can for the opposing team and just make them use a lot of seconds off the shot clock. They were one of the teams that led the league last year in just opponents using the shot clock uh, on their on, on opponents' offensive possessions, and Caleb Martin is is well suited because he's so active and he just jumps in front of guys and he and he just he just makes it hard for guys to just catch the ball and it's not to say that they're not going to there's moments where Zion got the better of them but overall I thought he did a good job I thought Tyler Hero actually did a pretty good job defensively they they tested him they were like hey man your assignment CJ McCollum and obviously with Miami's switch everything scheme he ended up sometimes on uh, Willie Hornan Gomez who started for the Pelicans tonight should also mention no Brandon Ingram or, or um, you know no Brandon Ingram and Zion no, only played. Some- yeah, no Valanciunas, and then Zion only played 11 minutes tonight. So it was a, technically um, a smaller lineup than it usually be. Valanciunas right. has been a matchup problem for Miami in the past. Yeah. It was an inside-outside game. Even over a guy like Bam, he's always been able to really pull down those rebounds. So Miami might have had a slight edge there with, just because they didn't have their full contingent. But overall, yeah. though, really strong showing. I'm glad you brought up Tyler. Four blocks on the night? Four blocks. Uh, just seems to be moving his feet well. Just really seems to take pride now. He's growing in that role, much more comfortable. And he's he's put in the work. And the muscle, and the, you could tell how the muscle makes a difference. I don't really know how much of like a by, by degree how much of a difference, but he looks more comfortable there, bodying up dudes. And so whatever, the, there's a confidence that comes with the work that he's put in in the weight room and otherwise. Even at the basket, like he was willing to just like get like junk it up at the rim. He was he he was uh, trying to contest shots at the basket with his 
uh, negative wingspan, which I didn't think was a big deal. Like you said, four blocks tonight. Most like those blocks are sort of fake blocks. They really should be credited as steals because he's. It's when the guy mostly has the ball coming up and he and he swipes it. Um, it's more of a steal than a block, but whatever. He gets the credit for the block. It's okay. it's turnover. It's it doesn't really matter. That's why we kind of call him stocks. Hands, absorbs the contact because of the improved physicality. I think those are the strengths that he can bring to the table. Going back to the offensive end, and Bam Adebayo pointed this out in post game that the starting lineup had 15 assists between them. That's obviously going to be what the, this offense's identity is. What I found interesting was that even though Kyle Lowry is the point guard to this team and is very much a traditional point guard in that sense, there was really no traditional ball handler. Nope. It was sometimes Tyler Hero bringing it up. It was sometimes Lowry bringing it up. Sometimes it was Jimmy. Sometimes it was Bam. Caleb. Um, even Caleb Martin would push it in transition and semi-transition. And so I think that's a really kind of interesting thing about this lineup. Ultimately, I think it'll be mostly Lowry initiating things, as it should be. But you look at this starting five, everybody can credibly bring the ball up and initiate offense. Caleb Martin to a much smaller degree than the other four. But like you said, like he could get a rebound and push it in transition and make a play with it, right? Well, he had a nice slick pass under the rim. Even, yeah, even in half-court sets there, he recognized the mismatch with Zion Williamson, who's much too slow to guard him and not very strong defender. For all he does offensively, able yeah. to pull his way to the rim. Not a great defender. Not a great defender. So Caleb recognized it, took his time, said, oh, you know what, I've got the inside step, blasted right past him, and was either able to make an assist to somebody in the corner or an open shooter from the perimeter or lead to the hockey assist, you know, that make the hockey assist that led to the assist that led to the three-pointer. It happened on a number of occasions when he was matched up against Zion, and I think that's just the versatility that we're going to yeah. see. It just five credible ball handlers, as you said, guys that can initiate offense, uh, Spo talked about it too. Yeah. It's not just Kyle out there. It's Jimmy. It's Bam. It's Tyler. And if you can get some playmaking out of Bam, out of, of Caleb, excuse me, you've got this dynamic, versatile offense. How do you prepare for this? The ball is constantly in motion. We could see yeah. something similar to you know maybe even Golden State's level of offense minus the three point shooting. Right. Well, look. Let, let's look at the three point shooting. Seventeen of their forty one three point attempts came tonight from the starting group. Um, they made seven of those 17 three-pointers. That's a really good... Yeah, Tyler went five for seven, made his first four from three-point range. I love the spacing that Tyler Hero brings to that starting lineup. That's the other part of this. Um, we almost buried the lead here because he had 23 points in his 25 minutes. Eight of 15 overall, five of seven from three-point range. Uh, had four rebounds and an assist, and we also mentioned the four blocks. I can't believe the first thing we talked about Tyler was his defense. Uh, but <laughs> You and look, Spoke both crediting him as an elite shooter? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why this is not known. He like his catch and shoot numbers were like bonkers last year, just w top one percent in the league in a world that does not include Steph Curry. Tyler Hero is an elite three point shooter, and of those four three pointers that he made, the first four he made all four of them, all of them were catch and shoot three pointers, and a lot of them from the corner too. He's an elite floor spacer. They are going to miss nothing by not having Max Drews or Duncan Robinson in the starting lineup from a floor spacing standpoint, but then you get the added benefit of all the other things that Tyler Hero can do, which is run pick and roll with Bam Adebayo, which is set screens for guys and be a threat. Like he could set, he, there were times tonight where he's setting screens for for uh, for Jimmy Butler or Kyle Lowry out on the perimeter, and because he's such a good shooter. That's not something we've seen from them in the past. No. It's and, added and physicality. It is, and we wondered, like losing P.J. Tucker, you know, I think Caleb Martin is as good a three-point shooter, if not better, than P.J. at this point. Um, but P.J. Tucker is such a great screen setter that I was wondering how they were going to replace that. And I, my initial thought was, well, just Bam will set more screens in the middle of the floor. The answer, is, at least from one dress rehearsal, it looks like it's just by committee. Everybody is going to screen for everybody all the time. You made a great point with the Golden State thing. No two teams moved more off the ball and cut more off the ball last year than Golden State and Miami, even though Golden State was still a little bit ahead of them in that regard. Uh, but that's what it's going to kind of take. And, and, you know, everybody was asking Eric Spolster about this after the game. And even Bam said uh, he loves – I have the right quote here. Uh, speed, the speed in that starting lineup is unmatched. Unmatched is the word that he used. He also went so far as to say, in regards to the starting lineup, it looks beautiful to me. It definitely felt comfortable for all of us. They've been putting the work in in training camp in the Bahamas. They put the work in in practice when they came back from Miami. This whole idea, by the way, that they didn't know what the starting lineup was going to be until tonight is, and maybe still are experimenting, they knew what the starting lineup was going to be for a while. I am convinced of that. I'm not sure and they've the gotten mystery. the reps in. I'm not sure why the mystery. We've been talking about this for weeks now. Yeah. Um, all right. We've got our uh, new favorite segment for the preseason. The last time we're going to do this, Does It Matter and Does It Matter? that Bam Adebayo was as aggressive as he was. And what does this mean for Bam in the regular season? But first, 
Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting information this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all of your sport wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, Boxing, and Golf. We have Major League Baseball playoffs happening right now, so you can get in on the action there. And then the great thing about uh, BetOnline also is for the NFL games, they have live updated lines throughout the game. So you can bet your second half lines, you can bet first half over-unders, so many great options. Head to BetOnline.net, use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, we're going to have our big overall preseason takeaways here in a second. But first, let's play Does It Matter for the last time this preseason, David? Does it matter that Bam Adebayo scored 25 points in 25 minutes? I can't see a world in which it doesn't matter. Like, this More is rhetorical. Ex- yeah, this is exactly what we've been wanting from him, and we keep seeing it, right? The aggression, the, the fluidity, the comfort level, the lack of hesitation. Just catches the ball, sees an opportunity, takes the shot. From yep. the perimeter, he took a three-pointer, missed it. Fine. Not a problem at all. This is the kind of... An in-rhythm three, kind of in semi-transition. I, I, like, he, I like when he's stepping into that three-pointer, left hand or right hand, shoot the ball right at the top of the arc. It's a natural three-pointer. If you're going to start as a center taking threes, that's where you want to take them. Yep. Uh, also, shooting the uh, mid-range jumper on a couple of occasions, yeah. knocking it down. Again, very comfortably, whether it was Hernan Gomez, Williamson, or anybody yeah, else yeah. guarding him, he felt comfortable taking the shot. Uh, also, 12 trips to the free throw line. That's something that can't be understated. Like that's yeah. the kind of level and continued level of aggression that we need from Bam in order for him to continue to just get to the line, put defenses in foul trouble, and just take some of the pressure off yeah. of Jimmy. And I think this is what we're going to see moving forward. I think it's going to be Tyler and Bam taking the brunt of the offense on and then allowing Jimmy to kind of not necessarily coast through the uh, regular right. season, but to at least save himself for when it really matters in the game. Jimmy Jimmy coasted in the preseason. That much is for sure. He went. He took five field goal attempts uh, in his 24 minutes tonight. Jimmy is not interested in shooting if it's the preseason. He don't care. Uh, but I do agree with you. Bam took 12 field goal attempts, which matched his free throw attempts, which is a great. That's a great ratio uh, for Bam. Tyler Hero took 15 field goal attempts. That was by far the highest on the team. And I I think we're gonna see that. I think with, between those two guys, and you look at who they're sharing that starting lineup with. It's it's Jimmy, who's much more interested in. Uh, setting up those teammates and playing defense and, and rebounding the ball in, in the he's regular season at least. He's gonna, and he's, gonna, he's, he's saving all that stuff for the postseason, as we've learned. Kyle Lowry, very happy to just get guys involved, kind of set the table and things like that. And then Caleb Martin keeps calling himself a plug-in guy, so he's not looking for his shots. He wants to get offensive boards. He wants to he wants to kind of take the scraps, and he's happy with that. So it's going to be Bam and Tyler getting a bulk of those shots. I loved how Bam – You, I want to go back to a word that you said was rhythm. And I love the rhythm. He's figuring it out. He's figuring it out when to take shots, where to take shots. Um, at first, it was everything at the rim. Get to the rim. Get to the rim. Set a screen. Dive hard. Get to the basket. And that's what he did. Right. End of the second quarter, kind of in the beginning parts of that third quarter and that initial stint in the second half, he starts hitting those turnaround fadeaways. He's feeling it a little bit. He's getting. He's got to the line early, so he's able to get some shots off. And he starts feeling himself, and he's starting to hit those shots. And they were still quick, right? It wasn't like that weird – when Bam gets in trouble, it's that weird herky-jerky mid-range yeah, stuff, and he'll turn around into something. Decisive. It's decisive. He fills himself. He's in a rhythm. He can st- shoot that. And then later, he ended up taking that one three-pointer, which I love. I love that he just took the one. He's not super aggressive about it. He's not spamming the three-point line. He just took the one to We've keep him honest. We've seen enough over the preseason. Are we yeah. comfortable saying that this is going to be the norm in the regular season? Bam agro bio. I think that's where we're going. Okay, let's, let's move on, shall we? I think that's the our, our <laughs> Does it matter that Nikola Jovic got time with the starting lineup? It's fine. I don't think it does, actually. I think he's gotten as occasional playing time during the preseason and practices and things of that sort. It's nice to see him in that comfortable rhythm. Bam talked about what a hooper he is. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, I don't think we're going to see that happen very frequently over the course of the regular season, so I'm not taking anything from that. It, I agree with you. It matters in the sense that we kind of got this weird time machine look because you know why they drafted Jovic is as a potential front court partner down the road for Bam Adebayo. Bam had very nice things to say about Jovic. 
Uh, Jimmy Butler said he's a hooper, and or I guess it was Bam that said that. But he said he's really smart for somebody who never graduate, who hasn't graduated high school yet. Right. And that's like, that's coming from Jimmy Butler, whose basketball IQ is second to none in the NBA, probably. Um, I I love hearing his his teammates talk about him like him and just juice him up a little bit in that way because it felt really uh, authentic to me when we were there uh, and the way that they were saying it. I like that we saw it. Like I said, it was kind of this interesting time machine sort of look at what it could be. Um, I think it was Jimmy who said it looked really comfortable. He looked really comfortable out there. Maybe it was Bam. I don't remember exactly. But it did. It did. And, um, look, it wasn't – you know, there were minutes there. Jovic with that starting group, he actually helped them uh, go go up by 10 and kind of break the game open. Um, he also picked up, what, three fouls in, in his first five minutes, I think. So awesome. there's <laughs> – this and, and you know got bulldozed by Zion on a, on one occasion, which you know happens to everybody. Yeah. But I'm so I'm not ready to say yeah, let's get let's give this group a whole bunch of minutes right away. Um, but it was just it was interesting to see. It was fun to see, and it was interesting that Spo was just like you know what, let's see it. Like let's just throw it was last preseason game. Let's throw it out there. Does it matter that Haywood Highsmith was not part of the ten man rotation? Does it matter that he wasn't uh, to? Nobody except Haywood Highsmith, I think. Like, I, I just think that this is going to be the norm, unfortunately. I think, he, look, no Omer, Omer Yurt's seven out tonight also. And, and we expect that he's going to get more playing time moving forward than Haywood Highsmith is. So the fact that Highsmith didn't play, I just think it's more of an indicator that he's just not going to continue to get that playing time, unfortunately. Because, yeah. I, I mean, again, I think he's brought in a lot of effort. I talked to him in practice today before the game. Uh, he says he's gotten a lot of positive feedback from the coaches and continues to do the work. Unfortunately, he just didn't get the playing opportunity until late in the fourth quarter. I think. Right, yeah, the garbage time minutes. Uh, we know what the top ten is. Like we said, the starting lineup with Gabe Vincent, Victor Oladipo, Max Drews, Duncan Robinson, and Dwayne Dedman coming off the bench. Now, I'm interested to see if it's if – it's, uh, well, Nikola Jovic got those like weird minutes when Dedman got into foul trouble, but I think Spo's initial thought was to just go with ten. But then, yeah, Yo- that's and that's when Jovic will probably see minutes in the regular season is kind of like weird – wonky Hybrid, things. Hybridized, um, foul trouble related minutes. But uh, I'll be interested to see who actually has the lead backup job because like you said, no Yurts have been tonight. Um, he was the only guy that was really unavailable. So is it Deadman that's the backup center? Is it Yurts have been? I think it's Deadman. I think it's going to be Deadman. I think it was Yurts have been's job to earn in the preseason, Deadman's job to lose. Yeah. And I don't think Yurts have been did enough in the preseason to outright come and earn it. Now, maybe they feel differently based on what they saw in practice and in training camp. But if you're asking me, I think it'll probably be Deadman as the primary backup to Bam. But like, like in foul trouble, if Yurtsevin was available tonight and this were a regular season game, instead of Jovic coming in, I think that would have been Yurt coming in, right? So, or maybe they, maybe they do try to go eleven deep and they play both. I don't, I don't it's really not even know. Just eleven deep. Like we, we talked, we've seen interesting lineups uh, throughout the, all the preseason. We yeah. saw Jamal Cain get significant playing time. Jovic has had his minutes. Drew Smith, we should mention. Just signed to a two-way yeah. deal. Just announced as we were. <laughs> well, that was my next question. So yeah, we're standing there. Oh, we're sitting there. No, no. Let's just. Does it matter that Drew Smith got the two-way contract, which ostensibly means that they've waived Marcus Garrett? Yeah, uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, Spo caught off guard uh, late to his media appearance because apparently they were, in his words, I think, working on the business end of things. Yeah. Which means some guys are getting cut today. Some uh, players are getting, I guess, designated for the Sioux Falls Sky Force, and we'll see what happens. Nothing officially announced as of a recording right, right now, and I don't expect anything to be announced anytime. But he, it, it's happening. Yeah. So if Drew Smith is the on the two way, they're going to go ahead and wave Marcus Garrett. I would imagine Marcus Garrett probably finds his way back onto the Sky Force because they they love him. Um, and this also means that Jamal Kane and Drew Smith are now the two two way guys. Right. Um, Jamari Bouye on his way to Sioux Falls. Um, Orlando, Orlando Robinson on his way to Sioux Falls. Michael Mulder, who they brought in late in this whole process. Probably on his way to Sioux Falls, or maybe he finds a different uh, landing spot there. Um, but yeah, those exhibit tens will be done as expected. Drew Smith has done a good job. Uh, you and I mentioned Drew Smith as a potential Gabe Vincent replacement in case by next year Gabe Vincent is signed elsewhere because Miami's not going to be able to sign Gabe, Max, and Omer. So we'll see. But um, I think these are the two guys that earned it. I thought it was Drew Smith and Jamal Kane. That made sense to me based on what we've seen in the preseason. Yeah, above anybody else, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately for Garrett, again, part of the system for a long time. They've already seen what he can do, and it's not enough. And I think a lot of that was precipitated also by the injury. Is that, that right wrist, man? Yeah. It's it's a bummer. You'd like to have seen him play with that defense and start making those threes the way that you know he – the, he obviously think that he can make, but we just never seen it because that right wrist has been so bothersome for two right. years. 
Um, the preseason is over, so we're going to zoom out and take a look at what we learned about the Heat uh, and their starting lineup next here on Locked on Heat. To help Heat fans get ready for the upcoming season, Official League, the fastest growing sports merch company, is launching an exclusive limited edition hat inspired by Miami Heat star Bam out of bio and designed by viral artist NBA Paint. Only 100 are going to be available of each hat for purchase at officialleague.com, and the new silhouette features a funny food character inspired by each player. And Bam out of bio is Ham out of bio. Oh, God. Here's even better news. We're going to be giving away a free hat to one of you. All you have to do to enter for our chance to win a free Official League Ham out of bio hat is leave a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, and then email a screenshot of that review to LockedOnHeat at gmail.com. Our only catch is that you have until Bam Adebayo attempts at least 18 shots in a game. Probably would, probably would have done it tonight if he played his normal right. line of minutes. Only played 25 minutes tonight. Once he does that, we're going to close entry, so get on it now. Email a screenshot of your five-star rating and review to LockedOnHeat at gmail.com for a chance to win a free official league Bam Adebayo hat. Before we get into our preseason takeaways sort of thing, uh, shout out to Manny of the Miami Heat organization working here at FTX yes. Arena, allowing us access to this glorious room. So uh, a listener of this show congratulated us on our success, but we wouldn't be having that success without listeners like him and all of you. So otherwise, thank you so much. Otherwise, we would still be in the media dining room with all the noise in the More background place, as they yeah. take down yeah, FTX yeah. Arena. Good times. We're calling this our post-preseason answers to our pre-preseason questions, David. Get right to it. Do the Heat have an answer at power forward? Do they have an answer at power forward? Absolutely. His name is Caleb Martin. Uh, that's the projected lineup that we've talked about for a long time. I actually predicted, I think in our predictions, I said that Jimmy would be getting significant playing time. You said it would be Caleb. I think we're kind of both right. I'm not, I'm not like giving myself credit in this. It's just the reality is yeah. they switch so often, it doesn't yeah. really matter. Like, like uh, you know, I asked Spo about that physicality of Zion and how Caleb handled it. He's like, you know what? It, it, the matchup wasn't really all that. They didn't have a matchup against each other all that much yeah. because the constant switching. You know, you saw Tyler Hero. You saw other players handle him on occasion. It's just it, it, he's not going to be tasked with more that he can handle. And yet he's, he's quick enough, he's strong enough, and I think smart enough to understand what's respon- what he's responsible for and do it well at a high level. And then, again, you've got great help because you've got Bam Adebayo, Kyle Lowry, and Jimmy Butler, who are all great defenders. It makes everybody look good, even Tyler Hero. Caleb Martin looks strong out there. He looks athletic still, even going against other starters. Sometimes it's different, right? If you look very athletic against other second units, you don't always look as athletic going up against other opposing starters. Uh, Blocked Zion Williamson at the basket. I am more convinced now that Caleb Martin can be the the power forward or whatever we want to call it. You're, you're, it's, it's more accurate like what you're saying. The Heat start two forwards. One's Jimmy Butler and one is Caleb Martin. Caleb Martin's probably going to draw the four on most nights, at least to start sets and start games. Um, but I'm more convinced after watching him tonight and in the preseason that he can hold his own, right? They're, he's going to get bullied. He's going to get bullied by bigger players. But the Heat got bullied by bigger players last year too. But like you just pointed out, their whole scheme of the defense is is to just junk things up, make things difficult for other teams to initiate their offense. And and I think the other thing that's kind of quiet about Caleb Martin, he closes out so quickly on shooters. Miami gave up a lot of three-pointers last year. And I think more than they wanted to. I know some of it is by design. They gave up more in the corner than I think they were comfortable with last year. Most but in the league. Most in the league. And teams shot it at a bad percentage. Yeah. And I think that was more fluky than not. Caleb Martin's much faster closing out. Though P.J. Tucker is a better defender, no doubt about it. But Caleb Martin is faster closing out on those shooters that it's just something I'm monitoring. It's just something I'm monitoring is, is he able to close out on shooters in a way that starts to limit how many of those threes that Miami's giving up in the corners? Above the break, give them up. Who cares? Well, are you concerned about him limiting the shots themselves or limiting whether or not those shots fall? Because I think so The shots themselves, just closing out, or however, I guess, just closing out I and getting them to either give it up. or about just giving up a low percentage of them. They'll, they'll yeah. be content giving up 50 threes a game or three, 50 attempts per game yeah. as long as they're shooting at a 33% or less, which is what happened last season. I think you want to limit the attempts from the corner. Sure. Give them up above the break. Who cares? Limit it from the corner. I think Caleb's just a little bit quicker closing out there. Something to monitor. Um, more post preseason answers to pre preseason questions. Will we really see Spo use a big lineup? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that it was answered. Like we saw it. He's, we saw him tinker with it. He referred to it as a big lineup. I just I don't think it's necessarily again as we just talked about the strength of this defense, what they do well, the versatility, the speed, the quickness, 
junking things up. Yeah. We'll see it on occasion. I don't think we're going to see it consistently enough, and I don't think it's going to be the answer to the starting lineup for sure. We're not going to see it. It's not going to be the starting lineup. Yeah. Everybody out there wanting that Omer Yurtz event starting the lineup, like, sorry, you're the losers of the preseason. It just didn't happen, and it's not going to. He's not starting. However, I will say this. Uh, I do think we'll see Spo use a big lineup during the season. I think that even with a, I don't think he loves the Bam Adebayo Dwayne Dedman pairing, but I think he's okay with the Bam Adebayo Omer Yurtz event pairing. For whatever reason, I think he's a little bit more comfortable having Big Yurt and Bam together in the front court than uh, Bam with Dwayne Dedman. Um, I also Why? think it's notable. I don't know. I really don't. I think maybe he just trusts Yurt as more of a spacer. Uh, I I remember I, I was talking to Yurt about this in the locker room after one of the preseason games and. Um, I was asking him about how much they drilled it, and he said that they drilled it quite a bit. Maybe it's just something that in the Bahamas and in practice, they just drilled Bam and Yurt on how to space the floor when they're on the court together more than they drilled uh, Deadman and Bam on those things and that pairing. It's just maybe it's more reps that they have together. It could be, you know, a sign of either Dwayne a potential trade target later yeah. on in the season and the Omer perhaps a younger player that they want to keep in the system for a month longer yeah. beyond that's, the season, that's... so that could be that. Uh, it's notable that I think that we saw Jovic and Bam together, going back to what we said earlier. Um, that That's a willingness on Spo to use two bigs. I know Jovic isn't really a big, but he kind of is the way that the Heat have been using him. So I think we'll see it in spurts, in pockets of games that make sense, but I don't think it, it, it's for sure not going to be the starting lineup. It's not going to be the closing lineup. It'll just be something that Spo goes to every once in a while. Post preseason answers to our pre preseason questions. Is Tyler Hero ready to start? Absolutely. Uh, yes. It's yes. done. Yeah. Okay, good. Post preseason answers to our pre preseason questions. <laughs> is Kyle Lowry ready for a bounce back season? Undetermined. Undetermined. I, I, we just didn't see enough playing time from him. And, and that's why I'm not concerned about his shooting woes tonight. I'm not concerned about anything we've seen from him because we know that he's capable of these moments, even still at this point of his career. I don't know that he looks drastically different. Like, I, I think a lot of us saw the postseason workouts and were optimistic, but I think it's really, I mean, maybe we just didn't know that Kyle was always doing this during his stint in Toronto and elsewhere. Like, this is just, this is how you stay in the league for as long as he's done, is to be able to put in that off-season work. And you know what? Even over the course of the regular season, you're still going to have moments where you fall flat. That's just the nature of who Kyle is. He's going to have games where he scores 30-plus points, and he's going to have nights where he's, you know, I don't know, two for 12 or something. Right. Like that. I mean, he was... Uh, two for seven tonight in his 25 minutes. One of six from three-point range. Had one assist, two turnovers, five points total. Drew a charge. Uh, yeah, digital charge. Um, he's three of 13 on threes for the entire preseason. He shot 36.8% overall in the preseason. I don't love what I saw from Kyle Lowry in the preseason, but to your point, we barely saw him this preseason. So it's really hard to get any kind of uh, feel for where for where he's at conditioning wise or his game if he, if there is a sharp decline or if he's coming back for a bounce back season I like you believe there will be a bounce back of some kind he's not going to be all star Toronto Raptors Kyle Lowry probably those days have probably passed but I think there are degrees better that he's going to be than last season um, if he's more available in better shape and just hitting those shots at a more consistent rate, that is, those are all marks of an improvement. Jimmy Butler, also another guy who just like wasn't taking shots this preseason, wasn't playing a whole lot. Uh, Jimmy and Kyle Lowry are very similar in the way that they want to preserve their bodies for the long run, right? And so I just there's not a whole lot that we can take from and Kyle We're Lowry. not writing off Jimmy, so I don't think there's any reason to write off Kyle either. Uh, I have one stat from Tyler Hero that I want to share. In his 51 minutes in the preseason, he scored 45 points. 45 points in 51 minutes. I just wanted to repeat that one more time. Those are total preseason minutes. That's not bad. 52% shooting overall, 58% from three point range, made 100% of his free throws. Tyler Hero had an awesome, awesome preseason. And we're not going to do this segment, but we discussed doing like a power ranking of the players. I was prepared to have Tyler Hero at the top of my power ranking, maybe even above Bam, just because we saw Tyler more than Bam. Bam didn't play as much as Tyler in the preseason. I am so convinced, going back to that last question, that Tyler Hero is not just ready to start. I think he's going to be even better as a starter than he was as a sixth man. I'm convinced of it. Could they have three All-Stars this season? Jimmy, Tyler, and Bam? Sure. Yeah. It's, it's, I think all of them. If you, if you were to just make a list of X amount of players that are All-Star kind of candidates, those three guys would be on it. Mm. I see no reason to think why not. Let's see how it plays out. Should be um, the rest of the season. 
Thanks again for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Remember to subscribe to new episodes of Locked On Heat wherever you get podcasts. And on YouTube, make sure to ring the bell to get notified as soon as new episodes go up. Now for your second listen, go check out the Ultimate Pro Basketball Preview 2022, a six-episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NBA season. The local team experts and the NBA insiders of the Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey all combining into one Ultimate NBA Preview. Search for the Ultimate Pro NBA Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast, We're going to have a bunch of great content coming up later this week. The Heat obviously don't start the regular season until next Wednesday, but we're going to have a show about the roadmap to winning the East. We're going to have our big predictions next week. We're going to have uh, what we're most excited about coming up next week. And then, of course, next week, you get the regular season to start. No more preseason games, David. That's really excited. excited. Very exciting to see that. Games that actually matter. Uh, it should be a great season, and I'm excited to be a part of the show and to be able to talk about heat basketball with all of you. So thanks so much for subscribing.